Hi there, and welcome to episode 5 of my new book, Treatments. In this episode, I decided to knock back the wild and colorful print here to see what I come up with. I decided to gel down some vintage papers with some gel medium and it's uh, Nova Color Super Gel number 209. I like to order paints and mediums from Nova Paints because I'll get my order within three days. They're located in Culver City and I have yet to um, visit the store. I've heard it's really pretty fantastic. Um, I just am a little reluctant to uh, drive into LA if I don't really need to. Um, yeah, the traffic here is pretty bad. You have to plan your life within the traffic hours or without, so you skip all of that. So here I am. I pasted down a piece of a ledger um, page out of a book and this really old uh, vintage page from a book. Um, it's uh, rather crumbly, so I'm being very careful. To make sure I don't crumple it up. So I'm still looking here for what would fit in there. And I don't want to just stick a big old piece of paper down. I think it's interesting to put pieces together. And which words to choose? I don't like the word unjust, so I'm going to go with the just. Of course, I have to um, make sure <laughs> I put my supernova gel inside this little um, container that used to have um, golden gel in it. I like the size of the container, so when I finished that gel, I just filled it back up with some Nova gel, my super gel. I love using a super gel because it dries fast and there's no problem with stuff sticking down. Right here, I am making sure that it's all pasted down and I want to pay attention to the little valley to make sure that it's going to stick. I decided to try some gesso on this page. So before I put a blob, blob of gesso down on it, I did it on that extra bit of paper there. And now I'm going to see what happens if I just plop it all on there. And this is how I work. It's all about experimentation. Sometimes I get something good, sometimes not so much, but that's okay. It's just an indication that I should continue to build layers. And I'm using the end of my scissors to see if I can get some kind of an imprint. And yes, I did get a little bit of transfer on those the words from the page. Uh, a wonderful what if that worked out. And here I'm just going to trim off the ends of the pages hanging off of a spread. And I like that little tiny piece of old vintage book page there. I was thinking I could just fold it over, but of course it's really brittle, so it didn't quite fold over, but I just stuck it down anyway. Now let me see what else I could do with this. I'm thinking maybe I could get some more of that page to stick down. On with the experiment. So nothing happened. And I'm going to give it another try with the ends of my scissors. Doing a little burnishing. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of paper left over, but 
not good enough. So I'm going to see what I can do with this jelly print. I think it'll add interest color-wise and what the heck. I'm not really planning. I'm just pasting stuff down. And I'm not quite sure why I didn't just use the whole page covered with that jelly print. But that's the way I work. That wasn't the best jelly print. See, I should have just put the whole piece on there, but we'll see what happens. So now I have that all pasted down. I'm gonna clean off the excess and tear off that little excess. It's hanging off the page. I like those rough edges. Now that it's dry, I'm going to see what else I can come up with. So, so far we got that. There's a little more trimming. And that is sticking out. So let me see a little peel and reveal. Well, I guess it wasn't meant to be there. And that's what happens when I'm creating and not thinking about it. I'm just going on to the next indicated, like what will happen. Whatever pops in my head is what I do. Here I am rubbing off some of that backing from the jelly print. And I actually kind of like the way that looks. There's that little piece of vintage paper that I went ahead and stuck down. And that's kind of an interesting look. It's interesting that when I look at my work after I've completed something and I'm watching it on the video, I realize, hey, that's pretty cool. I wonder right now, why am I going to stick that back on there? But well, that's okay. There's some, I see a face in that actual background, but that's okay. I'm working fast deliberate I just like that jelly print I love the colors on that so I just had to put that back it's definitely working without thinking Who knows, I might even end up putting gesso over the whole top of that. Like, uh, you know, gesso is a great equalizer. Now, I love this Conacridone Iso Gold. It really kind of spruces up a page. It makes it look antique -y, And it's just transparent enough to let everything show through underneath. Giving it a antique look. So I'm doing the whole spread there. I love that stuff. That's like my favorite. Mm, of course, I'm going to dab some of that off. Probably too much, but it looks good. I'm going to spread it around with my finger a little. Add some more from that blotting page. And here's a piece of fabric I'm going to use to just clean up some stuff. That one piece that I had pasted down that had the stitches on it. Totally got obliterated, but you could still see the stitches and you can feel them too. So I think this spread has a ways to go. But I'll just keep playing with it. But I love that Conacridone Iso Gold. It's the best. You can tell how much I like it. That's a good thing about golden paints is they are fairly transparent. When you buy the little bottles, you can see the black stripes on there and it shows how transparent the paint is that you're going to buy. Some of them are opaque and some are more uh, transparent than others. 
Here I'm just rubbing off some excess paper. And there I go again. I'm actually using that quite liberally. I tend to use too much, so I'll save that goodness by putting it back in the bottle. In there, see what a difference that makes to have that on there. I add a little water to make it a little more transparent, so as not to have to use so many, so much paint. And right there on the left side of that spread, you can I I see a face that I could have brought out. It's kind of a wonky looking face. It's the best. I love that stuff. Oh, there I go, tearing off the excess. I could get all, you know, picky and cut it off with scissors, but I love the rough edges. And here's going to show you what it looks like to add some, a napkin. And this napkin has been peeled. The white backing of the napkin has been peeled off. And I thought I'd do this to, I don't know, add something and even hide the, the binding part. And it's just a what if. It's fun. It's fun to experiment and see what if. The what ifs are what propel me forward. No planning, just having fun. Doing a little reminiscing of being in kindergarten. Without thinking, just doing. Let's see, now this is all dry. I'm tearing off the excess paper and setting that aside so that way, you know, I can use the bits for something else. For example, here's a little bit that I think I could use. The only thing about this super gel is it's, it's glossy. They don't sell it in a matte which um, they do sell matte, matte gel. They really like the super glue, the super gel, because it sticks down so fast. I'm just being kind of picky. I might go ahead and buy some matte gel next time. And shiny is okay, but you know, sometimes you don't want something shiny. Here I am playing around with, where could I put something? I like the little teapot and dishes, but I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I'll set that aside. Then here I go, pasting down the rest of that napkin, fold it over. And I accidentally pasted it onto the wrong page. <laughs> I almost glued those two pages together, but that's okay. When something like that happens, there's a way around it. And now I'm thinking here's a good place for my little vintage page. I'll stick it right there using that super gel. Mm, I don't even really need to paste, you know, wipe that whole page down. So let me see if I can get something from this other page that I've used for blotting the paint on the one page. And tuck that in there. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put a piece of wax paper there so that whatever uh, gel leaks out from underneath won't stick to the page. So I'm just going to fold that over like some things don't need to be wasted. And I got a little napkin there from the page turning over. So those happy accidents that occur. Tearing off the excess pieces. And that's always so satisfying to me. Going down those ends that always pop up. I always forget to pay attention to those. There's my teapot and dishes. And who knows if that will stay that way. 
So work in progress. This is one of my favorite things to do too, is just regular um, tissue that comes in presents. <laughs> I always save those tissues because they're very useful. And I notice there's a shiny side and a drier side if you feel the tissue. I like to paste the dry side down because it glues down a lot better than the shiny side. There, see? Feeling that paper to see which side is dry. Here I go. This book is going to end up weighing a lot because of all this gel and stuff that I'm pasting in here. And I don't even really care about what it's looking like yet. I'm just having fun pasting down the layers. I'm not real crazy about those wonky binding um, strips there. So I might do something to cover that up. Meanwhile, I still want to use those little bits of tissue paper. And the beauty of tissue paper is you can build up the layers and create wonderful texture. And that's what I'm doing here. And I see I'm covering up another face. How odd. You see those faces a lot. And sometimes I like to cover them up because they look a little disturbing. So here I am playing with the tissue paper, wrinkling it up and seeing what I can get. Maybe I can get a pretty flower. I hope you have enjoyed this little episode. And I apologize for being so late. I have more goodness to share with you. But there we go. See how I built up those layers and I will continue to build them up. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and I look forward to creating more for you. Have a great day.